Playing podcast. My name's Rob Howard, and this week I'm joined by Marcus Hurley. Okay, I just wanted to talk about uh, a game I've been playing, um, and and this is just going to be annoying because uh, it's just going to make you want a PS4. But uh, <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Horizon Zero Dawn. Oh I've only God. played about five or six hours of it, um, but it's pretty awesome actually. Um, if you have listened to this show for any length of time you will know that I was a big fan of The Witcher. Um, I was, I think I played, that took me about three months to finish it. A um, hundred and something hours. Uh, I don't think Horizon Dawn is, Horizon Dawn? Horizon Zero Dawn? It's the yeah. lamest name for a game ever, but it's a great game. Uh, yeah. It's um, well, it's a big be. open world game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it needs some kind of, I'll just call it Horizon, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, apparently the name of it is explained in, in, in the course of the story, but I've not got that far with it. I'm going to be playing it immediately after this, though. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you play Aloy, who's this uh, uh, child that is found. You play through like the beginning part of the game as little Aloy. Oh, cool. um, and my God, it really uh, tugs at your heartstrings, some of it. Some, the, the characters look so real at this point now. It's like just yeah. insane. Um, and it's like she's li- the the world is like this kind of far future setting where um, it's kind of gone beyond. It's like um, if you saw Cloud Atlas, where it's mm. like so far in the future, it's all gone tribal again because yeah. there's probably yeah. been some event. The AI has destroyed humanity, remember, yeah, and this I is like the remnants. The, um, the E3 unveiling when they did the extended trailer, and I'd, that grabbed me. That was one of the few games that made me think, I might need yeah. PS4. <laughs> Yeah, well, it, that's know. the thing. Sony like to invest in original IP, which mm. uh, I think uh, on Xbox it's a little more. Uh, they play yeah. it a little safer. I think you know? they killed themselves though on that console. I mean, I don't know whether I should be saying this since I, I don't know, but I think the one thing that they wanted to do with the whole cross-platform thing is the one thing that's possibly going to kill them in terms of the console market because because they haven't got any, any coming out on the console. Stuff. It's coming out on the PC. Yeah. Um, why would you get a console if you can get yeah. a PC? Exactly. There's no reason for it. If you've already got a decent enough PC, then you can play everything that's on yeah. uh, Xbox on a PC. I guess the only thing... I, I mean, I was uh, I had this at work. You know, I uh, work at Sega, so uh, mm. it was interesting to get some different perspectives on this because uh, like they were just saying, like, but it's a convenience thing. So it's like, uh, if you want the PC, but it's like easier to use, I guess if you've got kids... Uh, who just yeah. want to play uh, Halo or whatever? It's it's yeah. it is an accessibility thing. But I think as as a kind of elitist gamer, I guess that I am. Yeah. I just feel like you know if if you've well, already got a PC, the then but it's also it's also things like um, it's not necessarily to do with like to be get to get the best. It's also things like netcode. If you're playing a lot of online games, the netcode tends to run a lot better mm. on the PC versions on the Windows 10 versions. Yeah, and and uh, although the PC suffers a lot from hacking, uh, so there is True. that. Um, but then so mods. yeah, I can. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the upside to it, which is positive hacking. Um, yeah, not positive I... hacking, but you know. <laughs> yeah, I just struggle to. Uh, ju- I, I I would struggle to justify buying an Xbox, having a PC, a PS4, now, and a PC. Definitely. Um, yeah. Back then, things were a bit murkier. I mean, I, when I got mine. It was only what, a year after launch. There wasn't a huge amount of titles or something like that. But that um, was also like uh, uh, you, there was the fighting game that uh, you couldn't get on PS4 or something. Yeah, the Killer Instinct one, which was that's I'd, it. I'd been following that development for ages because I was a massive fan of it as a kid. Yeah. I used to spend all my money in the arcades and stuff. Um, and yeah, snares. So for me, that was one of the reasons why I got the console because I thought, okay, it's got that mm. exclusive. I didn't see many. 
you know, they had Guilty Gear was the alternative one for the PlayStation. So I was, I'm in an R in one or the other, and I yeah. just happened to get a deal on the console for that. So it was a price, you know. Yeah. Um, I think I paid cool. hundred less than that. But anyway. Yeah. So yeah, so you've got this far futuristic setting. Um, I really like how the um, uh, their their armor looks like bits of metal that have come mm. off these huge robot uh dinosaur type Zoid things, um, and yeah, that's what the game's kind of... So it's 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 got that Witcher thing going on where, you know, you're going around doing all the quests and stuff. But it's also got these huge beasts, some of which are, like, massive, like, uh, Brontosaurus mm. size. Um, and, like, you have to kind of get up on, uh, like, high bits of scenery, jump up there, jump on them, and then you kind of mantle up them. And then you, you've got, like, this uh, tool that you stab into them and that kind of opens up the map um which is cool so you can kind of see around what's yeah. around you um physically because you're yeah. up high and also on the on the map when you pull that up um so you can also uh tame a lot of the creatures so uh there's there's kind of a horse one where yeah. you can you can ride it like a horse so that's yeah. good cuz you can get around fast uh there are some smaller ones that you can just get to fight for you uh which are handy um and then you've got uh there's like a big crafting thing to the game where you can uh make different kinds of ammunition uh you can set traps uh you can uh and and you the combat's cool like you you can aim and one of the you get lots of abilities uh so uh, one of which very early on allows you to slow time when you're aiming so you can do some sort of really cinematic sort of like jumping backwards whilst shooting a <laughs> nice. creature's belly while you're sort of like flying backwards you can craft things in midair uh it sort of slows the game down so it's all it's all about like uh, uh hunting you know and survival mm. and and thinking on the fly uh but there's a lot of story to it as well and uh like I, I set up another ID so that uh, my housemate could play it, but I did sort of warn him that he'll have to deal with like a fairly linear sort of four, three or four hour sort of intro yeah. uh, until the game kind of opens up into the kind of thing yeah. that he likes playing. So I don't think he's going to bother to be honest. Um, but I really like it. It's definitely my jam. I love the I love the sort of story led stuff that's a bit open world. Hmm. I don't think it's going to take me as long as The Witcher. It's apparently like a thirty hour, forty hour game. Um, but yeah, definitely interested in playing more. So yeah, nice. it's pretty cool. Oh, it does look amazing. Um, it does look exactly like the kind of game that I'd love to play as well. Just seeing the way that you take down some of the creatures, like with the. Um, was it little tapers and stuff like that that you fire into them and you you sort of hold them down as well? Um, yeah, they have like well, the demo and stuff. Yeah, well, uh, the creatures have like different uh, weak points uh, mm. and it makes them behave differently. Also, what's brilliant is just watching these uh, creatures and how they interact with one another. A lot, mm. some of them like will uh, will kind of travel in herds. Oh, wow. uh, and <laughs> so, and like awesome. they'll have other little watchers that will be sort of like they're almost like guard dogs there to mm. sort of guard them um, and you can create a stampede like you know if you shoot one they'll all go Wah! you know <laughs> and start running off you can use the environment there there's uh, like a couple of missions I've played early on sort of teach you how to use the scenery to your advantage so mm. like you might be able to like uh, whack a sort of pile of logs and they'll all like fall down into like a little valley and and uh that will take pe- uh, some of the animals out awesome. um but yeah yeah so far so good uh I, i'm playing it on the playstation pro and you can d- decide to favor performance or resolution in the settings mm. so you can play uh it at 2160p and then mm. it upscales it to 4k or you can uh well that is 4k i think yeah uh, or if you don't have a 4K TV, you can favour performance instead and mm. get a better frame rate. So that's what I'm nice. doing at the moment because yeah. I don't have 4K at the moment. Um, but yeah, lovely looking game. I also oh nice little uh, touches. Uh, you've got kind of like a scanner, uh, which kind of allows you to uh, like scan enemies, find out what their weak points are, and other bits of the environment. Hmm. and it makes a little noise on your controller when you press the oh, button nice. in. So it goes like, whee! And it's just a nice little touch. Um, I think other games do that too, but it's the first one I've yeah. sort of played that uses it. 
Um, mm. So, yeah, that's really cool. Um, I've got a couple of bits of news here that I can mention. Uh, they're doing a sequel to Shadow of Mordor, which is the like Lord of the Rings open world sort yeah. of mashup game that um did you play that i didn't no not yet but i remember you telling me about the revenge system and stuff and it just sounds yeah. awesome. i just haven't yeah the had nemesis system games, but really yeah. need to get into that <laughs> i think that's probably why i've been so miserable lately <laughs> never mind <laughs> not enough um yeah the nemesis system basically allowed you to like you would take down uh orcs and they would uh like come back and mm. have their revenge on you and have scars where you- <laughs> like depending on how you took them out like they yeah. might have an eye missing if you shot them with an eye with an arrow sorry <laughs> or uh yeah and uh and and so it looks like they're they're basically going crazy with it in this new one that's actually coming out in august so i think they wanted to drop it as like a bomb at e3 uh okay. but they something leaked so they had to then uh forced their hand to sort of reveal it and there was a big gameplay reveal earlier in the week where they sort of went oh, through like a cross section of the game and you would uh you basically uh it looks like you are taking out you've got like you're controlling armies in this but hmm. as well as uh the nemesis system working on you it will also work on characters in your army so you might end up in a situation where a guy's after you but one of your generals has got a problem with him and will kill him <laughs> for you <laughs> so it looks pretty cool like there's like some cool uh oh, yeah. things they've done with it um visually it doesn't look entirely that ambitious but Shadow of Mordor was on this console generation as, as yeah. well so uh, it was still a very pretty game um, if you've got a good graphics card like I played it on PC hmm. um, I don't know what I'll play I this one on I think probably going for substance and they've got the engine right they're not going to go too far with it and they're just trying mm. to get the content in there yeah I think a bad got- gamble yeah, it was always a bit of a brown, brownish kind of game. Uh, although mm. later on it got a little bit more colourful. Um, when you got over to the other side of the map, there was a bit more grassy and trees and stuff. But they've got like Balrogs in this and oh, ring God. and ring wraiths, so flying things <laughs> uh, and big fiery things to deal with. Um, so that should mix it up a bit. Oh, I think. Oh, yeah, you can like dominate uh, enemies. So I think at one point in the demo, like they. Uh, you were able to dominate a guy, a ring wraith that was on a, on a dragon, so you can fly hmm. around a bit and stuff. So, wow. I really, I really <laughs> enjoyed the first game. I, I think I, I, I rated it my game of the year that that year it came out. So I'm really, really hmm. up for playing the next one. Nice, nice, cool. Awesome. Um, uh, just one more story I wanted to end end with. Um, it, they've sold one million PlayStation VRs, which <laughs> I'm not surprised I, to be honest. <laughs> I, I I kind of was a bit because I know they've been very uh, reluctant to release numbers for the Vive or the or the Oculus, um, although apparently they're doing fine, whatever. Um, <laughs> but uh, considering the install base of PS4, which I think is up to about 50 million at this point worldwide, mm. um, I think one million PSVRs is 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 pretty good. Um, yeah. For something they've that's shown... a high end niche accessory. <laughs> it's more expensive than the console I know. now it's at ridiculous. this point. <laughs> yeah, to get all the bits, it costs more than a PlayStation Pro. Hmm. So it's nuts. The whole setup, I think, if you get a PlayStation Pro, which I would recommend, to be honest, if you want yeah. a capable system that's going to run VR at a decent clip. Yeah, definitely. Like you want, you want to be getting the most powerful version of the hardware possible. If you get all of it, it's like it's a, it's probably. It's really about a grand. <laughs> yeah, it's the best part of a grand, yeah, for the whole thing. But, but you know, that's still the most affordable VR thing, like proper mm. VR, unless you just get the phone one. Um, yeah. yeah, but I think that's a good good, good uh, sign of... It's encouraging because, you know, it means that Sony will invest in more software for it. We've already had, like, uh, I haven't played it, but earlier in the year was Resident Evil 7, yeah, uh, which is the first AAA game to actually have like fully support VR. Um, the although, reviews from that, from a lot of the Let's Plays that I've seen, um, are basically they've said it's it's not a game, it's an experience. Right. Okay. Which yeah. That's that's is pretty high praise for something that's you know, um, and I think it's just the way that I mean a lot of people have said it's kind of like harkening back to when they first played Resident Evil, when you know yeah. you've never played anything like that before. 
that feeling, the actual feeling of terror and fear. Yeah. <laughs> Which, oh, that's which isn't cool. bad. So um, uh, I think eventually I'd love to get around to it. I'm not sure if I'd ever be brave enough to play that, but <laughs> no. <laughs> but... Yeah, I, I, that's the thing for me is like even non-scary stuff in VR is scary enough that to actually play a scary thing in VR yeah. is like not something I ever want to do. <laughs> really, <laughs> I've I've tried it a bit round round at Pat's, and it's yeah. just like. Oh, I mean, I was playing that Lucky's Tale game, which is a cutesy platformer. Mm. There's an enemy in that that's got tentacles. <laughs> I I'm not into that. That's just too much. <laughs> Even yeah. if they're like bright pink tentacles. Pink they're tentacles. tentacles. They're right? in my face. Get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I think we've been rabbiting on long enough, so uh, we'll call it there for now. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, uh, oh. Ian will be back soon. We're going to EGX together, so I really hope that? he can make that show. So that we can talk about some of the stuff we uh, we played there, hmm. uh, which it? is it's, uh, end of this month. Okay, hmm. I'm not sure what days I'm going to go on yet because it's Thursday to Saturday. I just hmm. want to find out like what's on when because the I think all the games will just be there throughout. But um, there's like uh, they'll have different speakers and yeah. Ken Levine, the guy who did Bioshock, he's doing the keynote, which I I, I assume must be Thursday. Um, mm. I tweeted them uh, at Eurogamer, but I don't think they've got back to me. So, yeah, but it's looking good. The uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it's cool. at Tobacco Dock on the f- last weekend in March, and okay. uh, there's quite a lot going on there. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, gaming wise, I haven't been doing a whole lot. Still, like I say, still chipping away at Final Fantasy whenever I get a time. To yeah, just, yeah. Sort of play that. Um, I've also got a um, a 2D sort of gaming thing, Mujin, which has been around for a long time. What's and that? It's, it's like a 2D fighting game, but it's like a very... It's like an engine that someone built ages ago, and you basically drop characters into it. Character sprites will be great characters and all that. So you can have insane sort of crossover battles. So you could have like the whole cast from Street Fighter going up against Homer Simpson. Or something like that <laughs> from the Simpsons games and stuff. And I just, just as the last bit of fun, I was just curious as to whether I could get it to run again because I used to have it on my old system when it was several builds ago. But apparently, it's all gone HD now. So I'm what's like, it called oh, okay. again? Uh, Mugen, M U G E N, M U G E N. Unofficial sequels to games. So there was the whole like um, Capcom versus SNK, which ended with a second one back on like the Dreamcast days, and people have made a third one because the audience demanded it and Capcom haven't bothered so it's very unofficial um, I have never ever heard of it's this a two, how yeah, have I never heard of this it's a 2D this? gaming creations engine that's been around for easily a decade <laughs> I'm having to Wikipedia this <laughs> and listen to you talking about it obviously yeah. But... but yeah no it's a nice interesting bit of kit um, and people have literally been just creating their own envisioned versions of dream match games and stuff and everything else it's okay insane. it's just insane you can have like iron man versus ryu <laughs> from wow from, and they take the sprites some people actually redraw the whole sprites so they become like custom bits of artwork in just for these games and they kind of just share them around the world and stuff like that so i thought i'd have a look into that again because i remember having a little dabble years and years ago and finding it quite fun but um wow yeah I know, mental. <laughs> I'm, I'm impressed. That is some deep nerd shit. That, <laughs> that is serious. That's like up there with LARPing and shit. Gaming subculture, <laughs> bitches. <laughs> cool. Never let it be said that you didn't hear about mad stuff on this show. <laughs> nice one. Cool. All right, yeah, we'll leave it there then. This has been the Not Playing Podcast in partnership with notlistening.co.uk where you can also hear myself, Marcus and Ian talk about movies and TV on the Not Watching Podcast and Adam Ash and Will talk about all manner of funny things on the Not Listening Podcast. You can email us at notplayingpodcast at gmail.com or you can tweet out or follow us on Twitter at notplayingpod. You can find the show notes for this show at notlistening.co.uk and if you're listening to us on iTunes then please do give us a review. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for listening. See ya. with no booty. My friend, I'm in to agree, cause I suck. I suck